Today I've got three woven dresses to share with you with cup sizes, amazing fit and the most beautiful fabrics in my stash. I'm very excited to share. Hi sewing friends, I'm Karina from LiftingPinsAndNeedles.com. Welcome to this channel that is all about sewing, limitless sewing and today I have woven sewing to share with you. I've mentioned many times that woven fabrics were my first love, it's how I started sewing and I have three woven dresses to share with you. I have an abundance of woven fabrics in my stash and some of them are more special than others of course. And the ones I've chosen for these dresses are one of my favorites. They were pretty much up there and I was just waiting for this style of dress to be able to sew them with because they are pretty structured fabrics and there are certain styles that are more suited to them. So what I'm sharing with you today is a new pattern from Itch to Stitch called Recoleta dress. All the features of the dress are everything that I like. It's not a tight fitting dress, semi fitted at the bust with amazing shaping of course because there's A to double D cup sizes and then you have more room at the waist and the hips. Very comfortable to wear. The bodice is empire line. It's supposed to finish right under the bust. Below there you have skirts. Front and back are both cut on the fold. They all have darts. It's a very well shaped pattern. You're gonna get a really nice fit. Not boxy at all and it's just the exact style that I love to wear repetitively all the time. The length is sort of mid knee intended to be. Mine are just a little above the knee which is what I prefer. A line skirt. It's not straight. It's not hugging your thighs and it's not a flowy skirt either. You can put short sleeves or three-quarter length if you think you can't slip this dress on which 99% of the testers can <laughs> there is an optional zipper you can put on the side seam an invisible zipper it is in the instructions but it's always meant to be optional I'm not going to put in a zipper if I don't need one I don't need one I made a muslin without putting the zipper in and I could pull it in and out perfectly fine. The neckline is going to give you enough space to put your head in and out without any drama and then because the waist and the hips aren't too fitted you can perfectly pull that over your bust and you'll be absolutely fine. <laughs> My favorite type of neckline is in this pattern because it's got the best of both worlds, a nice round scoop with a little V on the center. There is a center seam on the bodice and I love sewing that V neckline with that technique. So yeah, all around a lovely pattern. You need woven fabrics that don't stretch. They need to be pretty structured. I would stay away from fabrics that are too drapey because the style doesn't have volume on the skirt. You need a bit of structure and this is when you want to pull out those fabrics that you don't get to use that much. At least in my case, I'm usually going to drapey fabrics like this one with the Seychelles top. It's a rayon linen blend. I would not use this type of drapey fabric for this dress. Instead, I would stay with pure linen would be a amazing then you have your linen rayon blends linen predominantly usually you find blends that are about 55% linen 45% rayon they are medium weight they are pretty structured but not too stiff and they don't wrinkle as much as pure linen although they still wrinkle quite a lot I love that type of fabric and it's my favorite to work with maybe if you have a really nice quilting cotton you could use it as well if you wash it well and it's nice and soft maybe a nice cotton sateen a light denim, a very very light denim, not a thick one. <laughs> and then if you want to try lighter weight structured fabrics you could use cotton lawn, chambray, that type of fabric but in that case if I made it out of a really light fabric I'd probably wear a slip underneath or line it which is not part of the instructions but it would be pretty easy to do. I would rather in my opinion stay with a medium weight woven fabrics. You don't want to go too heavy because of the way the neckline is constructed. I've made three dresses. Two of them are the linen rayon blend that I mentioned. I love those and I have some beautiful prints that I've been hoarding so I'm very happy to have them made into garments. The third one is going against a bit of the rules and I used a bubble crepe. Now the bubble crepe that I have is not too light, I would say it's a medium weight crepe so I thought it could be appropriate although I used a contrast linen fabric for the bands to give it a little bit more structure that I don't think would have worked well with the crepe or this area of the neckline. So you'll see as I show them to you. As always new releases from Itch to Stitch are on sale for the first week, 20% off. I will leave all the links, all the information down below in the description box if you would like to get this pattern for yourself. You can use my affiliate link and I make a little commission from those sales and that helps support what I do in this channel. And I always thank you so much for your support in that way. I really appreciate it and you buying a pattern through there doesn't cost you any extra but a little bit of that sale comes back to me. The sizing is amazing 
from double zero to 40 US. And of course you have the beautiful, beautiful cup sizes that I am always a fan of, A through double D. Now sizes 22 to 40 don't have the A cup, they have the B cup onwards. The bust that is concave and you'll see more about that in the up close and so personal segment. I think it's very thoughtfully drafted to fit the curve of the bust. It's not just a little triangle like that. You'll see it up close in a bit. So I love those features there. And you have enough ease at the bust to be comfortable with three and a half inches approximately, approximately. And it's enough for the dress to fit really well at the bust, which is what you need, especially with a style that uses a structured fabric. You never want boxy, very loose styles with structured fabrics. It just does not look very good. Then at the waist you have a bit more ease, six to seven inches, and at the hips about four and a half inches. So you'll be able to move and breathe, and I'm even able to fit a little tight fitting slip underneath one of these dresses because the crepe dress does need it, and I'm perfectly fine, perfectly comfortable, really nice. What did I do? I made a muslin, of course. I always want to make a muslin with a dress that has a separate bodice because I want to confirm that the bodice is hitting where it needs to be. Whether a bodice hits the waist or hits empire, I want to know it's correct. With a bodice that has a shape like this empire line bodice, I really couldn't do exact flat pattern measurements like I usually do with styles that are more straightforward. Just empirically, I added 3 eighths of an inch to the bodice length. There is a shorten and lengthen line and just because of my height difference and just hoping for the best, I went ahead and added 3 eighths of an inch to the bodice length. And that's how I cut out my muslin. I knew I always needed extra length for the skirt because I'm just taller, so I have two inches extra on the skirt pieces. And when I made my muslin, I was really, really happy. I made my muslin in a horrible fabric. I just, it was just a muslin non-wearable. I suggest you make non-wearable muslins. You won't get frustrated and you'll get the information that you need to cut into the precious stuff. I'll show you a photo of my muslin here. Horrible, but I was happy with the shoulders, with everything, the sleeve, the neckline. I was just happy all around with the adjustments I had made and then I was happy to sew. I have a 14 bust to the waist. I blend it out very gently to a 16 hip all the way down. There are extensive diagrams and illustrations on the pattern instructions if you need to blend sizes. It's not straightforward because of the way the bodice is with the skirt. You need to unite the bodice and the skirt to be able to blend on the sides. Similar to when you have to close a dart to be able to blend on the sides. Similar to that. In Up Close and Sew Personal, I'm showing you a lot of the sewing. Not of the typical straight seams, but I am focusing on this beautiful neckline. It does have quite a few steps and quite a few pieces. Not hard to do, you'll see it's not hard. And also there's a little short segment that focuses on those concave darts on the bust that are so, so important to get a good fit on a dart. Darts are right there. People see them, I see them, I see them when I look at myself. So they need to fit really well. They aren't darts coming from the side. They are darts coming from underneath the bust. So that concave shape is super important. Let's see. I have all the pattern pieces needed to make the dress on the table. It does look like a lot, but it's not gonna be that bad. The back and the front skirt are both cut on the fold and because the bodice is an empire cut, you can see how the waist goes in below the top seam right there. So the waist is around there. There's a notch there. There's also a notch at the full hip. There are darts here on both sides, of course, on both of these skirts. If you look at the pieces, they look very similar, but what should tell you right away, which is the back and the front, is that the front over here has a shorter dart there than the one on the back. The back dart is always longer on skirts and dresses, and it's the same here. Here is my short sleeve. You can also sew a longer three-quarter length sleeve, but I'm just doing the short one. This is the back bodice. It's cut on the fold. It also has some darts right there. And you can see that the neckline looks quite scooped, but that's not how it's going to end up being. <laughs> Over there is the front. It has a center seam, it has a dart, and it will depend on what cup size you're sewing, how big that dart is. And then all these pieces are for the neckline. You can see that the back has one that's not interfaced and one that's interfaced, same as the ones for the front. You cut two pairs, you have four pieces of these. The ones that are not interfaced are the ones that are going to be on the outside. So this is for the back. Those are for the front. This is what is going to get sewn onto that curve right there and it will complete that neckline. That's why it's looking scooped now. But once that's on, it will extend the shoulder seam further and bring it up. Same as this, this shape here will be sewn onto that curve over there and it will extend the front, the shoulder and to the center front. 
and then this is actually the center seam that you'll sew a mix of a round and a v-neckline at the same time these other identical pieces here that you see in black are actually the same fabric it's just that these are interfaced and the interfaced ones are the ones that are going to go inside like a facing so that's for the back and these are two for the front in this video i'm going to focus mainly on how to construct this neckline how to sew all these pieces here we get a closer look of the front neck bands remember there are two pairs of each two that are interfaced two that are not interfaced the interfaced ones are the ones that go inside and the non-interfaced ones are the ones that go outside and before we even look at them or try to breathe on them we need to stay stitch and we will actually be stay stitching the interfaced one as well. We need to stay stitch the entire outer edges of these neckbands. We also need to stay stitch this section, this up to there, that up to there, and the same over there. The stay stitch is within the seam allowance, so slightly smaller than half an inch with your regular stitch length. And that's what you need to do to get this prepared so that this won't deform while you start sewing so that the neckline will conserve its shape. And then you also need to prepare your back neckband pieces. For the one that's not interfaced, you just need to stay stitch the top and you'll do it in the exact same way, from the shoulders up to the center. And then the one that goes on the inside, that needs to be stay stitched on both outer edges. What you see here is the front bodice. It's very small because it is an empire line. This is the dart right there. You probably can't see it, but it does have a concave shape. Okay, here you can see the bottom of this bodice and you can see the shape of the dart. You can see it's not a straight line. It's got that concave shape like that. And that shape on a dart on this area that's right underneath the fullness of the bust where it's round, it's going to help you avoid getting pointy darts. It's just going to help the fit. So this is a modification I would make to a dart to get a better fit for me, but this pattern is already drafted that way, so that's excellent. On this neckline, you also need to stay stitch this section right there, this curved area for both sides. This is the back bodice, and you also need to stay stitch the neckline and sew it in two sections coming from the shoulders up to the center. That will ensure that you get a nice even neckline. If you stay stitched from one side to the other, you might end up stretching that other half right there, which obviously is not desirable. I will stay stitch them at 3 eighths of an inch because the seam allowance is a half an inch, so that will stay within the seam allowance. Now continuing with the front, I'm going to stay stitch this edge of the neckline here of the front bodice pieces, both of them. The back neck band that is interfaced, remember, has to be stay stitch on both edges. I've marked with a chalk approximately where the half point is so I can sew up to there and then from the other side. Go on the other side, I'll just start with this side on top, it's just easier. And I can see there where I have to stop. The non-interfaced one it just gets stay stitched here on the top. For the back bodice, I have a little red mark there that shows me where the center is. Here we have a bodice piece and I have already pinned this dart. There's a rounded shape to this dart. I'm just going to take something straight to show you. A typical dart would be straight, like this. So it would start at the bottom, at the widest part, both dart legs, and then go off to the tip straight. You can see the difference to what this dart has and it's concave. It's about the anatomical place where this dart is. It's in a very small space, small and short, and it needs to create a lot of shaping for underneath the bust there. This is a little thing that covers my microphone, this tiny thing, but 
let's pretend this is a bust, it's round. When you have this concave shape to the dart, when it's like this, it will just conform to the roundness better. So you have a round bust there and it will conform better and shape it better than if it was a straight dart. If you sold it straight, it wouldn't accommodate for this roundness here all around like that. So that's why it's really important that this dart is concave and it is concave on the pattern. But for my personal fitting, I made it a little bit even more concave right there at the curve. Personal fitting to suit my bust shape. Depends on the bust shape and the volume, whether they are super important or not. I think the larger the bust, the more important this curve becomes. So it's a little bit different. I will sew it the same though. I will still start from the tip Careful to go right on the curve down to there. I have marked it in red so I can really see what I'm doing. This is where I want to make extra sure that I put my needle down super gently and it's right on the edge of the fabric, like right on the edge because that's how the dart is going to look better and not end up pointy. And I'm going to follow that concave shape right there. Here with a darker thread you can really see how curved the shape is and how my bust needs it for a nice fit. I'll do a little knot right here. For me making a muslin for this type of bodice is mandatory. There is no way I'm going to cut into good fabric without checking for details like this that I wouldn't be able to tell with flat pattern measurement. So let's turn this around. You'll see that I'll have a nice amount of ease right there at the curve of this dart. You can see how this dart takes that rounded shape there that is going to provide space for the shape of my bust that's round. And the tip there is barely noticeable, it's very clean. So I have the same thing on this other one here, the same shape, everything the same. I don't have a proper ham, but this round cushion will do. And it's what I'm going to use to shape this dart and to press it into a shape that makes sense. So I'll just find a curve here. That's how I'm going to press this dart. <laughs> so I basically gave it shape while I was pressing it because it is a rounded area, as you can see. So I don't want to put it on a flat surface and try to mold it to that. It just won't press nicely. So a hand would be nice. But I use rolled up towels. In this case, this round cushion is a perfect bust shape sort of thing that helps me press this. Now we have three sets of shoulder seams to sew. I'm going to sew the ones from the bodice, the back and the two fronts are matching there on the shoulder seams. Let me show you something. You need to match at the seam allowance where you're going to sew, not on the cut edge. So you can see that the front bodice shoulder, if you look at it from the back, protrudes there on the top. But when you sew the half an inch right there, it'll be right on the edge there. So those two edges match at the seam allowance and here as well. That's for the main bodice. This will be the top bodice. Then we have our sets of neck bands and we have a set that is not interfaced. This is the one that's going to be sewn onto the bodice. I've got these neck bands in this shape like this. Remember, this is the neckline. This is the V component of the neckline right there. And then it goes off round and then it's pinned to the back neck band right there at the shoulder seams and I have also done the same thing with the outer neck band the one that's interfaced you really need to make sure that your shoulder seams are accurate because you need to be able to match the neck band onto here and this does need to be accurate there this area there specifically needs to be half an inch let me show you this up close you can see that this top neck band here on this area protrudes from there when you look at it from the other side and this one protrudes there but when you open this up this is going to be smooth here although you will need to trim this away I wish the pattern came true like that so that that would match and you wouldn't have to trim anything but at the seam allowance there it matches with this type of fabric you can get away with finger pressing so you wouldn't really need to go to the ironing board you can just open them up hold them up like an accordion give it a press and bam finger pressing <laughs> after sewing all those shoulder seams we need to do some serious nipping to get the outer neck band sewn onto the neckline of the bodice at the back curve we want to do a few snips here now they'll be up to the stay stitch so there's no way that you're going to go past your seam allowance to snip every half an inch or so 
Now on the front neckline we also have a curve and also snip there. Now these snips will be safely hidden away once the dress is done because all of this will be enclosed. Okay, so that's the bodice snipped. Here we have the non-interface neckband that will be sewn onto the bodice. And the area that you really need to snip is, in, is this concave curve right there. You can see there's a dot right there. That's the first part where you snip. And then for about two inches or so, you snip down this edge and that will relieve the tension of this curve once it's sewn onto the seam of the bodice. It will allow this to happen inside. Over here at the back, I have marked where my center back is so I can match it to the bodice. There's the back of the bodice. I'll put the neckband right sides together like this. Remember, you are sewing the outer curve. And then I'll start matching it all up. Center back here to the center back there will also have a red mark. And then we'll match the shoulder seams over here. And it's all a curve. That's why this was snipped so that this can conform to this curve here. Now these seams are open. The junction of these seams will be seen from the outside. So I really want it to be exact. I won't be removing this pin. I'll be keeping it there while I sew carefully over there. And that's how I make sure that that seam is going to match. And the same here. Those are the rare exceptions where I won't take the pin out. I'll just be super careful when I sew over it. I'll usually hand crank over that area. And now here is where you have this red dot that needs to match the dot on this side right there. That's why all this snipping needed to happen because that's what the fabric needs to do. It'll be a type of pivot area here. I'll be very careful when I sew this area because I'm going to have excess here on the top and it has to be smooth. Now what needs to happen is a definite stitch, regular stitch length from the bottom, being careful around these curves, around there, the back, down the other end, it'll be one continuous seam. It'll take me a while, I'll go slow, being careful with all the snip there he is, trying to not get packers anywhere. This is the first curve that I'm going to navigate. Making sure that this excess, I move it from side to side so it doesn't get in the way. Trying my best to keep the raw edge of the fabric against the half an inch mark on the plate there. A little bit of hand cranking here. Here is the curve on the other side, here is my dot, and this is the other critical area where I want to be exact. For me it's a type of pivot but not that much, it's mainly lifting the presser foot to get this fabric out of the way, so I can keep going without it forming a pucker. It won't look like a corner on the actual neckline, it'll look rounded. Basically this outer neckband extends the neckline, extends the shoulder seam. Look how that matches really nicely. So keeping the pin in really does help. <laughs> now the seam on the inside needs to be pressed up towards the neckband like that. And at a later stage I will be trimming that down so it's not so bulky. Now we can sew these two seams in the center. These are the outer neckbands and you can see a red dot. That's where the sewing needs to start exactly, precisely and reinforce. You can see that started exactly there, reinforced, and this will be left open for the way that the V is going to be finished. This center seam needs to be pressed open. These seams go pressed in towards the center. This is the back part, and also you need to press that seam up towards the band. This is the inner neck band, the one that's interfaced, and we need to do one step before sewing it onto the neckline. And here where you see this dot on the outer edge, you need to snip into there. It's the only snip we need here. And I had stay stitch at 3 8 of an inch prior, but now I actually need to fold this in by half an inch. So this stay stitch will also be like a guide stitch because I'm, I can see it clearly and I can fold it a hair in. I'm quite happy that this 3 8 will help me press at half an inch and I can press along the curve all the way around. So on this edge, my stay stitch is not seen. It's actually just inside where I've pressed it in. Remember we had the dot that we had to snip in? When you press, see how that snip relieves the tension there? There's no way you can skip this. If you didn't snip into there, you have all this packet and tension and you wouldn't get this smooth curve like this. 
at all. So the snip is really important. Before attaching this to my raw neckline, I'm going to sew the center front seam here the same way I did with the dress. Start exactly on that dot right there all the way down to the bottom. Press this seam open and then I'll be ready to go ahead and sew this onto the neckline. Here's the neckline of the bodice and I have my inner neckband right sides together. I'll be careful here at the dot. We won't be sewing over the seam allowance. We'll be starting at one dot but pushing all the seam allowances to one side, going around and then pushing the seam allowance to the other side. Okay, here is the bodice with this one pinned on, right sides together following the shape. This is going to go inside and it's going to cover that over there. That's why this continues and it's long. There is a center seam on both of these, on the inner band and on the outer band, obviously. And I'll show you up close what's going to happen at that dot right there. I'm going to start sewing here and I'm going to push all the seam allowance to the other side. You can see where the dots meet and we have this free. And I can see actually and pin my dot here just where that seam starts and have it come out the other side exactly in the same place. So I'll put a pin there in the seam allowance out of the way here. And this is exactly where I'm going to start. Really don't want to back tack because I can never control if my machine's going to do a stitch forward or backwards that I don't want. So I'll start exactly there and leave long threads that I can reinforce by hand re really accurately on the dot. So I'll start there, go, or go around. When I'm around half point of this short area, I'm actually going to stop sewing and move the seam allowance to the other side so I can finish exactly on the dot but underneath where you can't see there. I can see exactly where I need to put my needle through. Also keeping the half an inch seam allowance here that I can see on the plate. So I'm going to drop my needle there and that's it. And you've seen me before that I don't like to pivot in these areas. I like to finish and then start again. I think it just turns out more crisp. There's no need to rush. This is pretty curved. You need to take your time to be able to control the fabric and sew it at the correct curve and at the correct seam allowance. And only doing it slowly can you get a really nice result. You can see I'm sewing with the curve like that and I'm moving the fabric. I am actually controlling how this happens. Some of you have asked me before why I use vertical pins and not horizontal. I just don't think horizontal pins help you because they don't match up the raw edges of the fabric properly. I put my pins where I'm intending to sew, like a stitch line of pins, and it's just more accurate that way for me. Okay, remember I said I was going to stop sewing at sort of the half point of the little V? That's so I can go back here and pin this, bring the seam allowance to the other side and pin it to the other side so that it's free for me to finish at the dot right there. And now I'm just gonna start sewing about 3 eighths of an inch before I finish there. I'm not gonna back tack, I'm just gonna sew right over it. It'll be less bulky that way. Right there. What you can see happens when you sew like this is that the seam allowances are free on the inner band and on the outer band and the sewing started right there, went around and finished right there, but these are free. I have some threads here so I can just reinforce there by hand on this side and on that side and then I'll be ready to trim the seam allowances down, grade them. I'm going to make this seam allowance a little, a little smaller as well. Along with this one inside, I just want to remove some bulk so I'll have a lot of fun trimming away some excess. I've left them at a quarter of an inch here. On this round area of the neckline, I still need to snip. You can't really skip the snipping here. Here where we have these corners, I'm not going to be under stitching there. I'll stop a little distance before and then start again a little distance after the corner. I won't be stay stitching around the V either. So in this V, it'll just be partial. This is the right wearer's side of the bodice. This is my right hand and I've got the little V section there and my inner band, the one that's interfaced, is on my left hand pushing the seam allowance towards the inner band like this and I'll start under stitching a little distance after that V, maybe 3 eighths of an inch away from there because I want the seam allowance in, in there to be free at all times. I'll under stitch to where I can, probably up to about there and then I'll start again here after that corner there. So the actual corner won't be understitched. Okay, 
Okay, after doing all that under stitching, we can flip this to the inside and you know the V is going to turn out so nice. It's like the most perfect crisp V on the inside, on the outside, there's no bulk, you know, the seam allowance is free inside and it's so pretty. I love this technique. Little corners will look like that and you have a little V and then it goes off to the round neckline. So we'll flip this all to the inside. And now there's two methods to finish this in the pattern instructions. One of them I love and it's definitely what I'm going to do <laughs> is actually just align this to cover that seam and slip stitch it, sew it by hand all the way around. It'll be super invisible and on the outside you're going to have a very neat finish. Alternatively, you could sew right there, edge stitch on the outside and catch this. On the inside I'm a fan of clean finishes and if that means hand sewing it'll be good I've finished slip stitching the inner band the one that's interfaced around the edges here right on top of the seam line and it's so neat this is the front and I've got my navy linen at the back it looks like that and this is how the bodice looks on the outside all you need to do now is, is attach the back skirt to the back bodice attach the front skirt to the front bodice separately. Once those are attached, then you can sew the side seams and then set in your sleeve, do your hem. This is a dress that you saw that I was sewing. It's such a special dress and I've had this fabric for years. Placing the pattern pieces to match what I wanted was so time intensive, but so worth it. I wanted the front neckbands and this area of the dress to be seen, but I didn't want to use contrast fabric. Because this fabric has a large scale print, there are quite large areas that don't have any print. So I tried to place these front neckband pieces like that so that you could see that blue area in the center of the dress. I really wanted that. I wanted to match the back neckband to the front neckline there where there were flowers. I really wanted that to work. And on the other side, I have plain navy. At the back, I have mainly navy and that flower that goes off to the side. You know, there's some flowers there, but this area, I wanted it blue and it turned out just like I wanted. But let me tell you how long that took. I was also concerned about the placement of this area where the dart was, that I wouldn't get a round flower there. So I have things there. I have prints. I have a large print on this other bus, which is fine. What I didn't want was like one of these little round things to be right there at the dart. So that took a while as well. And I knew it was going to be like that because I usually wouldn't recommend using large scale print for designs that have a lot of pattern pieces. I always say that every time I show fabric, I'm like, I wouldn't do that, but I wanted to do it. And there was a way around it. So I'm pretty happy. <laughs> then at the bottom, I took no care to match the seam to any print at all. You know, I just mainly focused on the bodice. At the back, I have a little cut flower there, but I really don't mind. I used every single amount of the fabric I had. When I turn it inside out, I'll show you what I did inside. I have these short sleeves. I have hand hemmed them. I hand hemmed the bottom. There's a little whistling sound and I think it's a little bird. So interesting. You can see my inner band with the main fabric and I did not have enough to cut these. So I used some blue linen in my stash. It's the same type of fabric, same weight, same composition. It's just that this is a solid and the main is a print. So I thought that's fine. It'll be all fine. I chose to finish all that by hand. You know, you had the option in the instructions of slip stitching it by hand or edge stitching it. If I had edge stitched it, I would have hand basted it. And then, yeah, I think the effort is pretty much the same if you do it by machine or by hand. I'd rather do it by hand, 100%. I'm so happy with how that looks inside. This V technique when there's a center seam is so nice. It always gives you such a crisp result there. All my dots are pressed in opposite directions to avoid bulk there on the seam you know you can see the darts going in different ways there is my concave dart i thought i had drawn it with a friction pen but i think i drew it with a normal red pen so i was a bit shocked when it didn't come out when i ironed it let's see how this one looks i'm so happy with it my recoleta dress in a printed linen rayon blend a little above the knee i did some length adjustments to the pattern adding a little bit of length to the bodice and then a lot more to the skirt. I really love the large scale print here and I've got yellow shoes to go with the print here. Here you can see that the skirt starts right below the bust, right here and there's darts on the front, darts on the back. Both front and back are cut on the fold. I've got a 14 all the way up to the waist and then from the waist to the hip notch, I blend it out to a 16 all the way down. Here you can see my bodice. It's right underneath my bust. It fits so well. It has a round neckline and then a little notch 
little V, I love that. The center band does look like it's a different fabric, but it's actually the same in the way that I cut it. I wanted the navy to be here mainly, so it would stand out. And I do have some print here on the band, as you can see. Really love how that turned out. Worth every second extra it took me to place the pattern pieces to get the vision I wanted on the fabric. Short sleeves, very comfortable, nice amount of ease right there. So that's the shoulder feet and the sleeve. It's quite comfortable. I always do this, you know, I feel like I could do anything I wanted in these sleeves and not be uncomfortable. Neckline is nice and flat. The V is really crisp. That's how the back neckline looks. I really like the print right there and it fits really nice against my neck at the back as well. Here's a closer look at the neckline. The V, the center seam right there, the little notch, the round neckline and the V. So pretty. I wanted to show you my bust starts a little up close, although you can't really see them specifically because they're in the print. But you can see the round shape. I, I don't have any pointy sections on the tip or shown on the side. It's quite rounded to the shape of my bust and that's what I get with the concave darts. I feel really weird showing you this up close, but the tip of my dart is right there. <laughs> Just so you can see on this side, the tip of the dart is there. Also, I don't have dimpling or any excess or pointy things, nothing like that. It's all very round. So happy with this dress and I'm glad I saved this fabric for it. I love this type of silhouette. It's not a tight dress, you know, I still have a lot of ease at the waist. There's ease at the hips, at the bust. And though it follows the shape, it's not really fitted. It's not constrictive. I don't need the side zipper to get in and out. I can just pull it on. So it's just perfect for me and what I like, nice and streamlined lines does not use that much fabric i'm so happy with this dress and the prints just everything like i imagined it. it just came to be contrast band right there but it's the same fabric just love it You know I get carried away and I make multiples when I really love something I just can't help myself I, I you know if I had time I would make 10 if I had clones of me I made another one and this is another special fabric same type just black and white for this one I didn't really have to worry about pattern placement or anything like that it was much more relaxing in the cutting phase it was just cut 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 very relaxing this one is sleeveless sleeveless is not part of the pattern but why not there is a trick to do to the armhole on the front because there's always a little bit of gaping there is supposed to be that gaping it's not gaping it's just ease for you to put your sleeve and so you can move so the way I remove it because it's a small amount of gaping I just do a basting stitch on the armhole when you pull that thread you're able to sort of remove up to an inch of length here without doing gathers on a pattern that's designed for cup sizes and with a cup size that fits you really well you're never going to have huge amounts of ease right here like when you're making a pattern drafted for a b cup and you're a d cup and the circumference fits and then you have this huge huge gaping it's, it doesn't happen like that with these patterns I know I'm able to convert each to stitch patterns to sleeveless very easily I made my own bias tape in there and it's hand sewn I did not want any top stitching on this dress everything's hand sewn inside as well and maybe you can see the v-neckline it's harder to see the details here there's the center seam easier to see when my skin is behind it so happy yeah I just can't even. I've had this fabric for so long and black and white, yeah, just a classic. My second Recolera dress, this is also a linen rayon blend, medium weight. And I've been hoarding this fabric for years for a style like this because these are the styles of dresses I really like to wear. This one is sleeveless and there's nothing special about pattern placement or print. I was just able to cut my pattern pieces normally here. This one was a much more relaxed cutting experience because I really wasn't concerned about what flower ended up where. 
because it's just very busy black and white i love it same size 14 and from the waist to the hips are 16 same fit everything second time around is always so much easier to sew Nothing different to see, just a really nice dress with a really nice fit in a fabric that I really love. Because I'd already customized the shape of the concave darts here on the bodice, I didn't really need to worry about that and I just went ahead and sewed them. Always so nice when you already have the fit down to make the next version. I made my own bias tape from a little piece I had left over and that's in there finishing it very neatly, I really love that. And it's just lovely to just slip on, no zipper, nothing required, super comfortable. I'm sure you know how much I love this dress, I feel amazing in this dress I love the style the feet everything and this fabric was perfect for it I'm glad I saved it for a style like this and yeah just thumbs up all around <laughs> I made a third one and for this one I wanted to do something different not a hack as such but just adding a little panel of color blocking on the skirt I chose a bubble crepe which is a medium weight crepe compared to other crepes I have that I really like I thought would be appropriate always with a slip underneath of course I always knew I wanted to do the neck bands in linen to contrast the print continue a panel of color blocking down the skirt so when you see it from far away it just looks like there's a whole vertical component in the center going down from the bodice all the way down to the skirt so ta-da this is what I've done <laughs> I love this fabric so much it's a recent purchase and I put it way up there in the queue I knew I wanted to sew it you know as soon as something came up that was suitable and I couldn't help but do this you can see I've got everything in black the inside is the same fabric I did the same techniques, it's all hand sewn. I added a panel, I have an exclusive video on Patreon about this version. It doesn't modify the pattern pieces or the feet, it just adds something visual here to the center. I made sure to match the seam right there very accurately when I was sewing the bodice to the skirt piece. And at the back it's the same, the dots are disguised in there, you can't really see them. For this one I did the same sleeveless trick here that you do on the armhole, worked really well and I have satin bias tape that is store bought. It's a dress of dreams really, <laughs> love it so much, let's see. My third recoleta dress in a bubble crepe on the sides with some linen in the center. It's just a really simple hack that just adds a bit of visual interest but I haven't modified the pattern pieces, just added a black panel in the center here of the skirt to match this bag here of the dress and I really love this look above the knee as always you can see this up closer I took really great care to have this seam that unites the bodice to the skirt match on the black section it's what I mainly took care of and I'm very happy it matches up it basically just looks like one piece I love the contrast of the black linen for the outer and the inner neck bands all of this is another fabric of course crepe on the side I really wanted this black vertical component here by continuing this on the skirt and I'm really happy such a lovely neckline combines a round and a V on one pattern. This is my sleeveless armhole which is based on the same armhole that has a sleeve with a slight tweak there but not a dot or anything just a little trick. I've got satin bias binding in there store bought for this dress. I always love a sleeveless I can't help myself. I know it's a style I'll mainly wear. This dress is making me very happy. I just love everything about it. Of course the red, the white and the black are always a classic that I love. This black going down the center is something that I really like, something I wanted to add to make it a little bit different and the modification for it was so so easy these are just the easiest types of hacks that make a little bit of an impact and i'm very happy don't you think this is starting to wear me you've been raining down like hail i'm weak i have tried to give you my soul but you can't love something What can I do?
love this style of dress. I think it's a classic. It's a type of pattern that you could wear for decades and you always see dresses like this. The classic type of fit, you know, there's no frills or ruffles or things that can go out of style. And I'm really drawn to classic styles like this that fit amazing. So yeah, highly recommend. As always, the quality is just top notch. Each to stitch patterns, the fit is amazing, the instructions. And if you want to give this dress a go, I hope all the sewing component of this video gives you a hand as well. If you're a bit intimidated, you'll see it's very doable and I put my best effort to making it very simplified for you to see up close exactly what I'm doing. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I will leave my affiliate link for the Recoleta dress down in the description box. Remember it's on sale for the first week if you want to get it for a little bit less. Happy sewing and I'll see you very soon. Bye!